I think Pingvin is the file sharing service I've been looking forward to be able to add to my home lab for so long now. I've tested other file sharing services. They just haven't quite hit that, you know, what I'm looking for. So in the, today's video, I'm going to show you Pingvin. I'll show you around it, how I've got it configured, and then I'll just show you the Docker Compose so you can get it deployed if you like as well. So let's jump into it. But before we do, I just wanted to mention giveinternet.org. Now I'm wearing uh, their awesome hoodie here. They have a bunch of other uh, designs and stuff like that as well. If you're keen on supporting them, I've got a link in the description where you can go down and you know uh, subscribe uh, to be a monthly donor or a one-off donor or even you know buy some merch. They've got you know some awesome t-shirts and stuff like that. Like that as well so really appreciate it if you can check them out that's giveinternet.org uh, forward slash check docs it's in the description below check it out thank you so much so this is my deployment of pingvin now as you can see here this is just a landing page of the url i've gone to uh, so i'm actually hosting this on share.techdocs.nz it's actually got a full domain name this kind of goes to show you that uh, I'm, I'm pretty committed to actually just using this in my home lab so the idea with this is that, you know, you can have multiple logins and stuff like this, but I've disabled uh, the logon and I only want to be able to log in with my admin account, which I'll do now. So I'll just quickly log in. So Pingvin is a file sharing service, right? So there's not a whole lot to cover here, but what it does, it does it right, is what I'm trying to get at. So uploading files, right? So if I want to just upload any files and that I can share with someone, let's say I was working on a project and I wanted to share some files. So I can click here. Let's say I wanted to share a, a clip of a video that I'm actually recording right now. Let's click open. Um, and now the cool thing with this is I can choose a link. So I can just generate, you know, a random link on here, or I could actually set my own name. So I could go um, my video, right? And, and I can choose how long I want this to be alive for. So the expiration. So let's say, this link will be live for, I don't know, um, yeah, one day is fine. And then you've also got minutes, hours, days, week, months, or years. Or you can just say, hey, look, this never expires. Someone can always access this. We'll just have mine expire in a day. In the description, you can add a little bit of a description if you need to add more information to what um, the share is and what's inside. The cool thing is, is that Pingvin allows uh, SMTP, and I have this configured, so I can actually email so once i've created this link i can put an email in here and rather than me having to then you know copy the link and paste it to them as soon as i make the share penguin will sh email them uh, a link and a little uh, explanation of you know what's been shared uh, if i want to add that so i'm going to put in an email address here and then i will show you uh, what that email looks like and then under security options you can also password protect the share as well and then you can also say hey look there's a maximum view so what that means is I could have a one maximum view and it's essentially a burn. So as soon as they click on it, that's it. As soon as they refresh the page, they can't see it again. So it's essentially like a burn after view sort of thing. All right, and there we go. So now if I hit share, what that's gonna do is there's my share there and you can see that um, it's just was uploading that file. I've got my link now and I can copy, go to this link. So I'll click here, go to link. And the great thing about this is if I click the preview, here it is. You can actually preview any picture, video like that, all just within the uh, web browser rather than having to download it first, right? So I can I can play it, and this is me. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's just me doing a test uh, clip before the, the recording. So yeah, you can preview it, and then you can uh, copy the, the link if you want, if you, I don't know, want to share it again or just save it for later and you can download it directly. So if I click download, it's just gonna download that uh, file for me. And you can see in the top right hand corner, it's all nice and downloaded. So I also had that email function, right? So let's see if I've got the email uh, with the link that Pingvin would have shared. And there you go, there's the email, right? So I didn't have to worry about this. See, there's no description, I didn't add one. But again, if I added a description, it would have shown up in the email here. So hey, TikTok shared some files with you, view or download the files here. The share will expire in a day, shared securely, with Penguin Share. That is so awesome, right? So that's all just integrated if you've got the email configuration, which I'll show you in a second. Right, so that is me creating a share and then, you know, giving uh, the link to whoever needs to, you know, interact with that share, download the files. What if someone wants to share files with me? Do they need to host their own Penguin to be able to do that? No, they don't. What I can do here is I can come up into this top right hand corner here and I can do a reverse share. So if I click on this and then hit create, now it's the same sort of process as what I was doing before. We've got the expiration, right? One day. Uh, maybe I'll want it longer, it doesn't really matter. 
Now the, here again, I can change the max share size of this reverse share. So when I'm going to give this link to someone once I've created this, and they can upload files directly to the share. Now, you might trust this person, or you might not, or whatever, just for, you know, you don't want them to use up all your storage on um, your NAS or wherever you've got the backend storage on, you can set the max share size. Again, I'm just going to stick with, you know, 10 megabytes is fine. Max uses, how many times are they able to use this? Uh, I don't know, let's say they can use it a couple of times. Well, let's just put five in there. And I can do a send email notification. So send an email notification when a share is created with this reverse share link, right? So when it's used, I'll get notified. So let's enable that to see what that looks like. Now let's hit create. And we've got that link here. So what I can do is I can copy this and I could send that to whoever. Go, hey mate, upload your files here and um, I'll get notified when you've done that. So let's act as you know a, a new user. So let's go to link. And just to prove it, I have opened up a, um, a private window. So I'm going to access that link. You know, I'm not logged in or anything like that. So I've just made it full screen again, but I have logged in via that private link now. So they didn't have to log in or anything like that. See, in the top right hand corner, it says sign in. So this is the view that someone would see. Now let's upload a file. Right, so I've just uploaded a file here and it says here, you're not signed in. You'll be unable to delete your share manually and view the visit account. That's fine. Um, I don't expect them to be able to manage any of that. That's on the admin to be able to do. So again, they can change the link name if they want, you know, set something custom or just generate something. I'm just going to generate it. The description, let's actually put a description in here. So let's say, um, uh, so this is just a TikToks logo. And they can also email recipients here as well. So if they wanted to email me back, um, they could put in my email address. But I also have that alert on, right? When they use this, I should get told. So I'm going to go, you know, don't worry about uh, emailing me or anything like that. Um, and don't worry about putting a password. Just upload what you need and hit share. And I should uh, get notified when you do. So we'll hit share. And we see that that image has now been uploaded. And this is the new link that's been made off of that reverse share. So we can go to that link. We should now be able to preview that file. It's a very compressed file. It's <laughs> This is like used for like a very small image, hence why it looks like this. But you, you get the idea, right? So they've created this, I've uploaded their files, and I should have got an email getting told, hey, look, that reverse share you made, someone's used that and made a share off of it. Let's check my emails. And there we go. Hey, a share was just created with your reverse share link. And I can click on this and it will take me directly to that share that they made. Now, I don't know about you, but this is exactly what I'm looking for in a service to just be able to send links and files to someone uh, and vice versa that they can send information to me. And it's all just, you know, it's so simple. It's self-hosted, uh, it's deployed via a simple Docker container, and it has that email compatibility uh, like the SMTP. And I think that itself uh, is huge, right? So you've seen how it works. So now let me just go over some of the admin, the configuration, and then I'll show you how you can deploy this. I'm leaving the deployment to the end because the Docker Compose file is so simple. Um, and if you're familiar with Docker Compose, uh, yeah, it's, it's very straightforward. Anyway, let's have a look at the actual configuration of Pingvin. All right, so we're back in the actual window now uh, of Pingvin where I'm logged in. So let's go to the administration side of things. So in admin, you've got two sections. You've got user management and configuration. Let's look at user management. So here you go, you've got my user here. So you've got the username, TikToks, and the email, uh, and you can see that it's an admin. If you wanted other people to be able to come in here and directly be able to you know, utilize the service using the same sort of way of being able to create shares and that, you can create a new user. So username, email, um, you can set the password manually, Otherwise, they will receive an email uh, to set up their account. And then if they're going to be an admin, uh, which means they'll be able to access this admin panel, um, then you can enable it. If they're not going to be an admin, then just leave it unticked, and then they can just create the shares and stuff as they wish. But again, with me, I'm happy with just a single user. Uh, the main reason for that is I just have the one admin who can create the shares or the reverse shares, and that's all I need. I don't need other people coming into here um, and doing that. So that was the user management section. Now we've got the configuration. So if we go on the configuration, this is where you can do a bit of customization, which is really cool. You've got the app name. So mine's called TikTok Share, as you can see in the top left hand side, and then the URL, which this has been accessed. Now, if you're running this via Docker, remember um, that when it says something like local host in here, which it will by default, that's not going to work for uh, a container because you're not 
connecting to it via the local host. So make sure you either put the IP address of the host machine here, or if you were gonna make it publicly available, which kind of makes sense as of what you would do, you'd put the domain name in here like I have uh, here. Now the cool thing is here, you can say, hey, do you wanna be able to show the homepage or not? So uh, we could actually turn that off. I showed you that before, like, you know, where you can sign in and it's got all the information about Penguin. Uh, you can turn that off if you like. And you can set a custom logo as well. So in the top left hand corner, I've got the TikToks logo. Uh, that's how I uploaded that. Under email, this is where you've seen it before. I have enabled SMTP. You can see the little toggle on the right hand side here. And this is where I can kind of adjust how I want that email to be. I think the default information here is great. So I just kind of leave it like that. If you want, you could change this to TikTok share if you want. Uh, but it's always nice just to uh, give a bit of a shout out to the original creators of the service. So I'm happy to leave Penguin in there. And it's the same for any of the other services that will um, get sent out. Reverse share, share message, password subjects, uh, resetting the password, you know, invites, all of that stuff. Now you've got the share configuration itself. So I've turned off allow registration. So on the home screen where you could go to share, rather than just a sign in button, there would also be a sign up. I don't want people just to be able to sign up, so I've turned that off. You've got, you know, allowing unauthenticated uh, shares, whether, you know, unauthenticated users can create shares. Uh, I've, I've left that off. I just want to be in full control of this. You know, I've either sent you a link to be able to upload files to, or I haven't. Um, I don't really want it to kind of be Wild West. Uh, the max expir expiration, so uh, the share expiration in hours set to zero to allow unlimited expiration. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but if you would want, you could always know that all your shares will expire at a certain point, just that uh, peace of mind if you want. The max share size, so you know how I could set the share size? This here is saying like really like di dictating, you know, how big of a size you can have. It's pretty much uncapped at that point. Uh, you've got the zip compression level, which you can change. Uh, so it's got the ranges from zero to nine um, and nine being the maximum compression. I left that as default. I haven't changed any of this, so not, I'm just leaving it as nine. And you can also adjust the chunk size of your uploads as well. Um, as I say, here, smaller chunks can enhance success uh, rates for unstable connections, while larger chunk speeds for up for you know stable connections. I have a pretty stable connection, so I just leave mine um, as the default size. And we also have the SMTP setup. So this is my SMTP setup. So I use a Mailgun uh, that sends out my emails. It's a free service, uh, so I just use them. Right? You can use Gmail or whatever you want. Um, I just yeah, I just use Mailgun because it's easy to configure um, and then yeah this is where you configure it there's no configuration in like a JSON file or, or a YAML file it's all just done in the UI which is awesome so social login is great because it actually allows you to configure OAuth if you want to be able to connect uh, like to log in to uh, Pingvin using that instead so you can see here they've got you know github they've got Microsoft they've got um, discord if you want uh, and then open ID which is just like a bunch of uh, services that you can use uh, so I could use like, something like Authentic, which I do, so I, I might look at doing that. Um, so yeah, that's awesome as well that they've got that functionality. A lot of services kind of skip on that. So now let's just quickly cover how you actually deploy this using Docker Compose. So the Docker Compose file that I'm using uh, to deploy all of this will be in the link in the description that goes to my document uh, website. So make sure to go check that out, which is just docs.techdocs.nz. But let's look at the official GitHub. So this is the official GitHub. So they don't have like the Docker Compose file here. You just got to scroll up uh, into their files and they've got kind of two, uh, like a dev version of the Compose and then they've just got their Docker Compose. So if you click on this, this is all it is. Very straightforward. And this is essentially what I'm using as well. And the great thing is, you can also enable Clam AV, which is the antivirus and any files that are uploaded and stuff are scanned as well. So you can have that. So you might be sitting there like, well, what's to stop people from uploading malicious files to my service? Well, you can have that uh, Clam AV, and also generally you're probably giving, you know, file share access to people you trust as well. Um, but anyway, you can have that. That's a, that's some functional functionality that they allow. But this is all the Docker Compose file is. So let's have a look at just deploying this. So we're on my sandbox server at the moment. This is where I normally deploy things before I determine if I actually want it. Um, so I'll be moving Pingvin from my sandbox to my main server in a second. But if I just do an LS, you can see that we have a data folder and the Docker Compose file. So let's just look at the Docker Compose file. So it's exactly the same that you've seen before. We've got a data directory, and then we've also, inside that data directory, we have images. So if we go out of that, and we just have a look at the data directory. You can see we have the images. 
Now uploads and the pingvin share.db uh, DB were made on creation, uh, but the actual data folder and the images folder inside it were made by me. So just make sure you make those first, right? So you want to do make directory data, and then you want to do a make directory data images, right? Um, otherwise, you could face permission issues. If you let Docker create this images and data folder, it'll be owned by root. And then what happens there is, yeah, you get permission issues, right? So if I do an LL, you can see that the data folder is owned by TechDocs. Um, and then, yeah, so just make sure you make those uh, folders first. Otherwise, yeah, you might get some permission issues. That will be explained in the documentation that I ha uh, have as well on the docs.techdocs.nz page, just to make sure to follow those steps. So that's it. That's Pingvin. It's an awesome service, and I think that's the file sharing service that I am going to be using from now on. Um, again, you've got that data directory where you know everything's stored. You can have that sitting on a NAS, right? A NAS share, and then so you've got a bunch of storage rather than just having everything being stored on a single server have it all on your NAS instead. Um, bunch, of, bunch of ways that you can do the configuration. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support lately. The channel's just growing like crazy. Uh, it's really cool to see, and we're building an awesome community in the Discord as well. So make sure to jump over to the Discord. Uh, if you're seeing this video on the release day, I think there's about one more day of the Raspberry Pi 5 giveaway. So make sure to check that out as well. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.